basically. From this week's longer podcast episode, which was 142, we covered the overwhelm. We covered overwhelm and how to spot overwhelm and really where to start. Now, so much of where we start is going to be related to this freeze response. And so being able to understand the freeze response will help us know how to recognize it and know that we need to work on it. Many people come to me. In fact, this was a question that came in from uh, Rachel, a therapist in Seattle. And I'm headed up to Seattle for a book signing and launch stuff tomorrow. So excited for that. And so Rachel asked the question around the freeze response and why is it associated with brain fog? So let's look at that. And I'm going to show you here that the longer episode, if you want to watch that or listen to it, you can listen or watch the podcast episodes these days, episode 142, why stress isn't trauma and how to spot overwhelm and where to start healing. And what we're looking at is if we don't know if we or someone that we're working with has a chronic freeze response, we won't know to start there. So I am going to review the freeze response, when it happens, why it happens, and the brain fog associated with it, so that when we're recognizing that as it's become chronic, we know that we need to work with a chronic functional freeze and why we need to start there. In the body's steps, and these are the five steps that the body takes to go into a trauma response, it starts with the activation. And so we always go through stress in order to get to the trauma response. And that stress we can call activation. It's an upregulation of our energy, an upregulation of our protection mode in order to figure out what is the problem and what do I need to do about the problem. It's a very action oriented step. But then there is a point at which we can't continue in an active response. And this can happen whether we've reached the degree of activation that our body can handle and not fall apart or not die. It also is the length of time. And so if we've been within our window of stress that we can tolerate, but we just have been too long in that state, well, then that will also be a reason for crossing this critical line of overwhelm. And that's why we call the two reasons why we cross that line too much too fast, meaning too much activation too fast. And our body says, I can't do that level of performance for you or too little for too long. And this is where we've been in that stress response, but we haven't had the rest. We haven't had the recovery. We haven't had the support that allows us to sustain that stress response. And so as we near the end of what we can do for time in that stress state, we will come against the critical line of overwhelm. At this point, everything is going to shift. At the point at which we reach that line, this survival strategy of responding is no longer not only the best choice, it actually becomes dangerous. It becomes dangerous because it becomes a risk to our physiology, or if you know medical terms, a risk to our homeostasis. Homeostasis is this idea of internal balance, internal, internal physiology that allows my blood chemistry to stay in just the right range that I can stay alive. So it's the range of my physiology that can sustain my life. And that is why as we cross that critical line of overwhelm, it's because our nervous system has detected, has decided that this problem that's in front of us is a life threat. When I started realizing that my freeze responses were because my nervous system had decided I was in a life threat, I thought, how ridiculous is this? This is clearly not a life threat. This is another person. 
granted, yes, as a person I care about and they said something hurtful or they did something hurtful, or if I was in residency and I remember that moment where I was getting berated for something that I had done wrong and that internal shame of, oh, I am a failure. My body was perceiving that as a life threat. And I thought, how interesting that it would consider emotions a life threat. But that's exactly what happens. And when that happens, our survival strategy changes. Our survival strategy now goes from active response, and I'm going to be producing a lot of energy to, I just need to retreat and I need to hide. And if I'm going to hide, I need to become really small. I need to become still. I need to be cold. So our metabolism shifts down. But one of the other strategies is this disconnection from our reality. Because our reality is so unreal, it's so unbelievable, but it's also so unbearable. And as a result, our nervous system says it's not good, it's dangerous in fact, for us to be fully engaged and fully present. So instead of being fully present, I'm going to ah, disconnect or disengage from my reality. Emotionally, we will feel that, but what's happening at this cellular level are these immune cells in our brain, and they are unleashing inflammation, cytokines, chemokines, and that's creating the brain fog that allows us to disconnect mentally from what's going on. And that is why when you perhaps have been in one of these freeze responses, you've noticed that people can be all around you, but their voices seem a little distant. I remember one moment when my body went into this freeze response and it literally did go into like a real freeze response, which is in the form of fainting or having a concussion and losing consciousness. That is the body almost like short circuiting the system because we've gotten in way too deep. And in that moment, I'm coming out of, I'm regaining my consciousness. How's that? I had, what I had done is I had been biking with a group. We were going fast and I was, um, the group had passed me and the person right in front was doing something silly, something he should not have done putting the whole group at risk. And so he went down on the pavement and because he was in front, everyone else followed suit. And so did I, I went down, I hit my head, I broke my collarbone again, but I lost, I lost consciousness. I believe because I don't, I don't remember the actual fall or the, the seconds or the moments afterwards. But as I am regaining consciousness, people are all around me, right? Like they're helping me sit down on the sidewalk, get out of the road where we were biking onto the sidewalk. So I'm, I remember I'm sitting down on the sidewalk and all of these people are around me. And it's just this very surreal feeling where they feel so distant. Their voices, I can hear all their voices and they're all concerned. And Amy, are you okay? Amy, can you say something? Amy, talk to us. And I'm just in a daze. And that can happen not only when you have a concussion, but a concussion is one manifestation of the body's freeze response, but it can happen in lesser degrees where you still feel that disengagement from your reality. We can often feel that with ourselves. We can feel numb. And this is where a lot of people come into my courses and they describe feeling like I've lost my joy. I used to enjoy life and I've lost that. I just go through life, but I don't enjoy life. And what's happened is that they've been holding this trauma and that always results in a chronic, so this is no longer acute, this is now chronic freeze. 
We can even add the word functional, chronic functional freeze, because they're still functioning. They're still going through life. They're still doing their responsibilities, but there's this inner sense of, I still want to hide. Things feel hard. And so, yes, I'm showing up, but I'm having to push myself in order to, to show up. This is where we start using more uh, substances like caffeine or food. In fact, food that often is creating some type of an immune response like histamine in order to give us adrenaline and help us get through. We're fighting a chronic functional freeze. It takes a lot of energy, <laughs> which is why over time, you will notice that you become more tired, more exhausted, and even a night's rest is not clearing that out because this has now been accumulating and it is growing in terms of the amount of energy that is required. So going back to our process then of going into the freeze response, we look at if this is where we are at, or if we're a practitioner professional and we're helping other people, we can recognize, yeah, you or I have this degree of secretly still wanting to hide secretly. If I could, I would want to escape it all. I just want relief. That's a chronic functional freeze. And so that's where we need to start. Many people say, oh, but no, I'm, I'm only in stress. So I don't have a chronic functional freeze and I don't need to work on that. And I say, no, your anxiety is because you're fighting your freeze. It's because you are having to use so many things. You're using stress to try to stay out of your freeze. And when we kind of uh, give them relief from that anxiety for whatever reason, whatever mechanism, whether that's a SSRI, a mood medication or so, something else, whatever it is. But when we give them relief, they notice that they fall all the way down into that heaviness. So that's why we start with the freeze response. We start working with that freeze response and start learning to open that up because then as we open up that chronic functional freeze, we have more energy to dedicate to the process, to the journey, to the healing that we're doing. So Rachel, to answer your question, the brain fog <laughs> is always going to be part of the freeze response. And the brain fog is a good way for me to recognize when my body's gone into an acute freeze response. And there is a protocol. So I've got my brain inflammation protocol that I am on consistently so that I can keep my immune cells in my brain out of that state. And then we look at the element of when we have that brain fog, we know that we've got this freeze and we, we want to start there as opposed to starting with the stress and the anxiety, even though that will need to be part of the process. But the freeze is really what's driving so much of that anxiety and that stress. So I'm Dr. Amy, your host for this Biology Behind It podcast episode. Thank you for joining me and look forward to sharing more on this biology of trauma and specifically the chronic functional freeze and the brain fog associated with it. Mm.